This is for my thumbnail because today I'm going to tell you how to make kids love you. I'm talking about grandkids, the neighbor kids, little children. This isn't about teenagers. Although if you do it when they're little, when they're teenagers, then they still love you. All right. Cause they maybe not remember everything that you did, but they only remember that they liked you. So every time they see you, they like, I like this lady. She's fun. All right. I have my list here. Okay. How do you make kids love you? All right. When you have a brand new little baby, grandbaby, or babysitting baby, or anything like that, I have found that, of course, they love you to hold them and rock them and sing to them. It doesn't matter what you sing, and it doesn't matter how your voice is. They love it. And they love to watch fish in our aquarium and in our I go out and sit by the pond. I know you guys don't have one, but um, the fish and I have food and I'll feed them and they just love it. And then in the uh, living room, I always put them over my shoulder so they can look at the fish aquarium. It is something about it just mesmerizes them and they just stare at them. All right. So then they get a little older and they can sit up on the floor. My dad told me this one and it works. Children, little kids, think about it. They are always looking up at parents. When you see a drawing of a child, a child's drawing, they don't have necks. The, the pictures that they draw, all the adults, they don't have necks. They just have a head sitting on top of the stick figure or whatever, right? They don't see our necks because they're always looking up at us from the floor or, you know. So... Get down on the floor with the children. I remember little Peyton. He was, you know, the preemie grandchild that was um, two pounds, 10 ounces. And of course, he didn't come home until he was, you know, I don't know how much, three, almost four pounds or something when he came home. But I had to, his mother was in college at the time, beauty school college, and she wanted to finish it and she had him early. So she never got to finish her college. And so she had me and the other grandma come and we rotated during the week and we had to travel two and a half hours and spend the night and babysit him for a couple of days. And then the other grandma would come so she could finish her school, which was a good thing for her. And so... I would get on the floor, spread the blanket out and get on the floor. And he just was learning to sit up. So, you know, four to six months, because first you prop him up. I would get on the floor and I would play with him. I showed him how the toys work and I would talk to him like he is a real person, a big person. And he would just look at me and I would show him how the toys work. Little children love you to get on the floor and play with them. And it, as they grow into toddler, they love it. My dad, every grandkid, great grandkid that come over, he'd get the toys out and he would sit on the floor, cross-legged, play with those little children. And it forms their minds that they, you are a safe place and a good place. And they remember, they love you. All right. Um, the next thing when they're growing up, I'll try to do it in order. Um, of what I have here. Okay. Now, as Peyton grew up and I would go visit him and then he had another brother, Carson, but Peyton, especially, I would always say, I want you to come and visit me. And I came to visit you and, you know, I can't wait for you to come. And so then, you know, we, I would tell him it's far though. You know, he's like two and three. Well, and then he got older too, but we did it. And we would draw maps and I would get, I would especially buy a poster and I would go to the Dollar Tree and buy car or truck stickers and any kind of road stickers. And we would draw a map and I would show where his town is. And then I make the road and the highway and how he had, we had to go through each town and to get to my house. And 
he had so much fun doing that. And then I'd let him put the stickers on the road and we would draw the, you know, the town or the lake you went by or whatever landmarks. He loved that so much, just spending time with him and drawing a map. So for boys, that's really a fun activity if you live far away from them. If you don't, you could just draw maps to go into town things that they like, the park or something. All right, then um, my other grandson, he was obsessed with building things. So I bought, well, like they have these placemats. I should have, I have one that are like sticks. So we, I took the stuff apart, all the twine, so they were just sticks. Because I'm not going to go out collecting sticks. And then I bought the popsicle sticks. And we would make forts, like, you know, just A-frame, like a tent fort. And the walkway, and glue them together, and make the forts for his guys. Oh, he had so much fun doing that. And then we would make boats, and take them, you know, you don't have to be very fancy, and just hammer nails in a board to make it look like a boat and sail and we'd go out to the pond and we'd I'd tie a string and then he'd you know play with them in the water and that was fun he loved doing that and he still has his memories of he would tie strings to his guys and put him you know on the little structures that we built and I like doing it too it was fun to create little you know forts with the sticks and the little girls. What do the little girls love when they're little? Tea parties. Little tea parties. So we would go, I would always have a tea set. And then I have like the crumpets. I don't know what crumpets really are, but I would break up cookies on the little plate and tell them these are the crumpets. We're going to have tea and crumpets. And they absolutely love, they love pouring. You can't have pretend food or anything. Do it in the kitchen and put real water or if you're brave, something else in the pit because they love pouring. They they spill a lot. They love pouring. I always put a dish towel, pretend it's a tablecloth and, and their little uh, chairs and table. And then in the summertime, we do tea parties outside. They love a tea party and sit with them on those little chairs Hold your little finger up, you know, and then just really play with them and talk to them. And I remember when I was a little girl, I would go to my grandma's house and she had beautiful, fun dishes. And she had these little cups on her shelf, you know, up there, built-in cabinet because of the old house, always had built-ins, you know. Nowadays, they don't do that so much, but her house did. And so I would look at those, grandma, those cups are so pretty, Someday we will drink out of them. Every time I went, she lived like 30 miles away. Grandma, those cups are so cute. Someday we're going to drink out of them. And guess what? She never did it with me. So I inherited those cups. They're packed away, but this was another set she had. And I let them drink out of them. They love little serving cups. Here they are, big kids, you know, they're eight and 10. They still get out these little things to drink out of. And I go, you know, if you got a big cup, you wouldn't have to fill it so much. So often they still, I have a whole set of these that I buy every time I go to Goodwill, I look for them. They love these little root beer cups. And every time I can tell my grandchildren are here when we have dinners because they love the special silverware that I have. And they always use these. And I buy them on purpose. <clears throat> and I have quite a lot of little special silverware. Because that's what those little girls, well, the boys do it too. They love to eat their piece of cake and their dinner with the little things. I don't know why. It's just that they don't have it regular at home. So, you know, it's the memories at Grandma's house that make it. So I have all these special little dishes for the grandkids that, and they use them. Okay. I'm hot. This is the Valentine sweater. It's hot. I'll turn on my little fan so if you hear it, it's my fan going. All right. Um, did talk about those. Oh, another thing is, 
Some people don't do this. I've always done it with every relative and nephew. And I was Aunt Pepsi with my one nephews, my brother's little boys. I saw them be born and I loved them so much, Cody and Sean. And so we would, um, I would always let them drink out of my Pepsi because, you know, their parents didn't let them have that. And so they called me Aunt Pepsi. But back then, I didn't have one of these drink things. I know people get those. Do I have one here? No, the Stanley Cups. They're so popular right now. I don't like them. Sorry. You got to wash the straw. You got to, if they fall over, they leak. Oh, you can buy this special thing to put on. Oh, this is, uh, I just like this. If I, talk, I knock this over so many times, it won't spill. I don't have to have a straw sucking it up you know i don't like the stanleys sorry stanley plus i heard somebody said they had lead in the bottoms of them what are we doing anyway this probably does too but i just like my this kind i don't care what brand it is i'm not it, to me when i see somebody with a real stanley like my daughter and all her children have i gotta get a tissue i don't have a a Timu tissue. I have to use a real one. If anybody doesn't know, I use the Timu tissues in the clothes. You could use them to blow your nose. Anyway, um, my nephews, I let them drink. And my grandchildren, I like share my drink with them. I just let them. And if, you're, if they have a cold or something, then just get a little cup and pour some in it. I share my drink with them. And, you know... I don't know, but that really endears them to you. They want to sit by you and, you know, they'll be, uh, I, oh, you need a drink, don't you? And I share my drinks with them. And it's always diet, but they don't seem to care. They just drink it and they love it. So, when they leave, and if, you know, if it's you're scared of germs or something, then just don't drink it. Wait till they leave and wash it and clean it up for yourself because of back flush or something. But I always share my drink with them. And of course, you know, I don't drink beer or anything. So there's nothing I have to keep from them. Except for their parents maybe not want them to have it. But I don't care. Then don't have me babysit them and don't bring them over if you don't want me to do that. They want you to babysit. So don't worry, they'll come back scrapbooks i've showed the scrapbooks that i made with my kids my kids my grandkids they love it and i don't care what you put in there or what page they're working on i don't care if they're boys or girls they all love it and right now my one daughter they're going to build a house so they're in a rental so they packed away their scrapbooks so we still just make the pages and I put them in the plastic pages, you know, and I have them in here. So when they get unpacked, I can put those pages in their scrapbook. But it makes them feel important. And that's all kids want is to feel loved and feel important and something special for them about them. So if you don't have any pictures, then just draw around their foot. Put paint on their hand. Do a hand print. Um, I've even thought of doing their ear print, but their parents would get really mad. But, um, you know, you can make scrapbook pages, draw their pictures they draw, anything. You can have them cut out a magazine. Of course, you know, we don't get magazines anymore, but cut out things in something that they love. I want you to cut out everything in that magazine that you love right now and then put it on a page and put it in there and any accomplishment, their school papers and stuff, maybe you don't see them because you don't live with them, but, um, and they, I take them on photo shoots. Children love that. They used to love it more. Nowadays, everyone, you know, when we had film, you didn't have as many pictures or something, but nowadays with our camera, our phones, we can, uh, have many pictures, but, take them on photo shoots. I even took them to the cemetery and had them take pictures in front of my husband's um, headstone. He has a diamond headstone. And they loved it. Although my one granddaughter goes, Grandma, 
who is grandpa with? Because <laughs> it's he's with his first wife. Oh, and I need to clarify my poor husband all night. He's so worried because in my yesterday video, I said something about my husband beat me or something. I don't even remember what I said. Half the time, I don't remember what I said. He goes, they're going to think I beat you. I said, Jamie, my followers, no, that was my other husband. No, my new husband. Well, he's 29 years. He never beat me. He's the most kind man ever. And I told you how, when I was looking for a new man, a new husband, yes, I looked. And I wasn't going to settle. But I didn't care what he looked like, uh, what he wore, what he drove. How, all I wanted was a kind man who treated me good. And that's what he is. All right. So, photo shoots. Kids love him. They love their picture taken. Just go to the playground, go to their school, go to their library, go to their church, get a picture in front of where they go and stuff. Because someday if they move or whatever, they're going to love those pictures. And then I have done it, especially had them printed up. So when they come over next time, we can do scrapbooking. And I go to the Dollar Tree and buy the scrapbook stuff. But you don't have to buy anything. Just get paper they aren't picky one bit. And, you know, you can use color crayons and make pages. They love it. All right. The next thing, of course, cooking with them. It's a mess. It's more work having them cook. And, like, frosting cookies, uh, don't eat them. Let them, they're there, cook children's cookies. We don't want to eat the cookie that they frosted. You know? So... But they love cooking with you. And it's bonding and they lift, they make a mess, just laugh and go with it. Because they're learning. All right. they do, And they love cooking. They love any kind of crafts you do with them. Let them paint right with you if you're painting. I know I went over to Ari when I showed you a picture of Ari. But she's 16 now. But they were living in our rental. Oh, I'm trying to get used to these progressive lines because you have like three now. Don't know. Anyway, I know my husband tried them once and he said, I feel dizzy. And the guy, the doctor goes, just keep wearing them. You'll get used to it. But he, he couldn't take it. So he went and got the line bifocal. All right. So, um, I was going to paint the bedroom for my daughter. I don't know why I'm painting it, but I was helping her. She had two little babies. So I'm, and it's my hat rental, you know, so I, I'll paint it for you. Well, the little Ari was like two and a half or three. And I just gave her a paintbrush and let her help. I, we had to drop cloth there and Hillary's going, she's too little. She can't do it. I just, I'll fix it. Anyway, she had more fun painting that wall with the paintbrush, and which I need to write that on my list for just a minute. I need to paint my bathroom shelves downstairs. I keep forgetting, and I don't go in that bathroom, and then when I do, I'm like, oh, I never finished painting. I have to write that down so I won't forget it on my to-do list. I may be retired, but I have a lot to do. So much to do. I still, I thought I had all my mending done. I got my sewing machine out, had it all piled here, and I sewed all of one day, hemming sleeves and doing everything. Then my husband goes, um, what about these pants over here that are pinned? I forgot to do his mending, his uh, new suit navy blue suit and I forgot to him fix the pants and they think if you have a fat waist men they're going to make the legs way fat men don't have fat legs like that only women so I have to take the legs in and you got to do it on both seam sides or not if you don't then they're going to go crooked I gotta do that all right I'm not done yet okay because we're gonna you know talk um okay i talked about that so take you know get those pictures and do the scrapbooks okay and then if you have your own printer you can also print off on your own printer they don't care about quality either and if they're in the newspaper cut out 
anything that they've in the newspaper and put it in that scrapbook. They love it. And then they'll start saving things. I've saved, I brought these saved for my scrapbook, Grandma. Um, now, little girls and boys, I buy, after Halloween, the costumes. I have a whole giant bin of dress-up clothes and costumes. They love it. And I just get a kick out of it. The only thing I hate about it is they wear them and take them off in all my bedrooms and in all the bathrooms. And I find them for days afterwards. And then my older ones borrow them for Halloween stuff. And then they didn't bring them back. Craig, wigs and stuff I had. His friends all borrowed them and they didn't bring them back. I don't really care. But if you did care, you have to... Sometimes you need a like a list, a checkout list. Write that down what you borrowed. I ha my husband has some tools. We don't know what happened to them. And he probably loaned them to somebody and forgot, and yet they didn't bring them back, and he can't remember who he loaned them to. If you borrow something, bring it back. That's another thing on the pet peeve list, right? People who borrow things and don't bring them back. My daughter's really good at it because... She's a good housekeeper, and she doesn't like the stuff hanging around that's not hers, so she'll give it back to me fast. Okay. Um, the fashion show, yeah, I'm talking about that. So, they love dress-up. And if you have old clothes, the dress-up clothes, like, I had some... In my young... All right, I'll confess. In my younger years, I had some lace lingerie, little short ones... Little, you know, there weren't anything like crotchless or, you know, anything like that. It was just like one piece little nightgown things. So I put them in the dress up thing and they're like little, they're the right length for little girls, the gowns. And I have to laugh because it's like, I wash them. It's like, uh, you know, they don't really know what they're wearing. <laughs> that was my whole lingerie. <laughs> I had this one, here I'm telling a story in a story. I had this one lace lingerie and it was like clear lace, you know, that you wore. And then a little skirt, mini, see-through lace. So the one time, this was with my alcoholic husband, the girl's dad. So they are gonna wanna hear this story. Anyway, I decided, oh, I'm gonna get a little frisky. So I put on that lingerie after my bath. I came out of the bathroom, he's laying in bed and I'm like, he bursts out laughing. So that, I, I never put that one on again. I never did that trick again. Anyway, so I, I still have that lingerie and the dress up thing. And they wear it as their, they put it over their clothes, you know, it's funny. Oh, you, now you hate me because I told that story. All right, so play dress up with them. And also not just that, but my one son, he was a single dad. He had custody of his kids. And he, um, you know, I would take the kids to church. And so I would buy their church clothes. And I would order them from this place. And I ordered so many. And my husband goes, what are you going to do with all these clothes? Because they were beautiful dresses. Yes. I was a dress lady back then. And I sold them. I would go on the corner and set up the whole dress thing and sell my dresses. And I made a lot of money doing that. That was my sidekick. My sister goes, you always have sidekicks. I have always had sidekicks. And being the dress lady, and I'd go to the fair and have a booth. And I did a lot trying to sell my dresses. I'd go to different towns. Then I got in trouble in one town because you had to have a permit or something. And I'm like, okay, I'll get one next time. Leave me alone. They wouldn't even let you do that in Montpelier. But I made a lot of money off of those dresses. And I still have some left over. I'll show you sometime. I'll do my dress lady routine. So I was, and I even have a big magnets that went on the side of my doors that say the dress lady. And that's what I wanted to be. And now I don't, back then I didn't buy dresses for me. I bought them for the little girls. But now the little girls are not into little dresses. So now I'm the dress lady for myself. I have enough dresses. I can use my stands and my sign 
and go on the corner and sell my dresses now. Somebody said, you have enough stuff in your closet, you could have a consignment shop. Yes, I might, but they're all one size, number one. Number two, I am not going to try to have a store ever, ever again, or sell on the corner, or have a yard sale, have a bazaar. I did all my sell, all the stuff I've made. I used to have to go to bazaars before Christmas and try to make Christmas money, and selling all that crap and that I made. And then your self-esteem goes down because people don't buy your wonderful wares you made. <laughs> or they try to do your price down because they don't think it's worth it. Or you sit all day and nobody's buying anything and you're tired of just sitting. Your back hurts. You're either cold, you're hot, you're hungry. You bizarre ladies know all that. And that one lady, coupon girl or something, she says she does flea markets. Oh, I can't think of anything worse. Sitting at a flea market and talking to everybody and trying to sell your stuff. And no, I'd have to be hungry again to do that. And I'm not hungry again. So no, I'm not going to open up a store. I'm not going to do a bazaar. I'm not going to have even a yard sale. Now, if my daughter-in-law, she always has a yard sale and they let me put some of my crap over there. But then my crap doesn't sell because if I'm getting rid of it, it's probably not very good. No one else wants it. I'm surprised when someone sells. One time, even my pillowcases embroidered with the lit crocheted, they were at the yard sale. So, not going to get into that. All right. Let's see what else is on my list. All right. Sing with them. They love it. When, but when they get to be teenagers... They don't like the singing anymore. <laughs> now, I'm so mad my granddaughter erased it because it was pretty darn funny. It was at Christmas time. And I'm sitting on the bed over here wrapping the Christmas present. And my granddaughter's sitting here. And she's on her phone, you know. And I'm not really, pay we're talking. But all of a sudden, I just start singing a Christmas song. Silver Bells. And I just went... Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, you know that part and she happened then when I started singing she started filming me and then I am just belting that part out and here she has it on film and I just looked oh and I just died laughing I said you didn't record that because you know I sing horrible I could ha I have a tune I could hear it if you're on tune or off tune I have the music in me I just don't have the voice box and Trevor, we both have the same thing we got from my mother. Our voices, our voice box. If we talk all day, we get laryngitis. And Trevor, when he starts his new school year, his he'll go home and his voice hurts bad. And, you know, if we talk too much, we get laryngitis. I used to go home to Brookings and visit my family. And my sisters would all come over and we'd all stay at my mom's and spend the whole day together talking and talking and our little children would play together and I would get laryngitis every time because I talk so much. So we have weak voices. Although Trevor does have a pretty good singing voice, but I don't. My range is like two notes. Uh, uh, that's it. You know, two notes. I can't, but I can hear it. I was, and I'll have a confession to make. I was supposed to be a concert pianist when I grew up but I never got piano lessons. Everyone in my family, they all got to have piano lessons. I never got them because I was a middle child. And you know, the piano lessons with the other ones didn't work out too well. My one sister can play a little and my younger sister can play. But me, I never got piano lessons and I should have been the one to have them because I know I would have been a concert pianist. I got the feeling and I can play by ear. Yes, I can hear a song and I can plunk it out on the piano and I know chords and I just done that by paying attention. So I just knew and they all will have piano lessons now. No, I had I paid for my kids, my girls and stuff to have piano lessons. I'm not going to do it now, but I can play by ear. I'm not going to play at church, but I do have a few church songs because this is what I thought. I always thought now. And this is funny because it kind of happened. 
when I was young, in my 20s with my little children, I bought this little organ key. It was about this big, plugged in, and it was a little organ. And so I learned the church songs, a few church songs on it. And so then, you know, we used to play church when we were little. And I showed my granddaughters the other day, you know, I told them how we used to play church. And they go, you did? I said, yeah, my sisters and I and my older sister would play the piano and we'd have a speaker and sing the songs and then, you know, have the sacrament and we would play church. So then they did it. But, oh, they were lousy. At, they didn't mimic church very well, but there's only two of them. You need more people if you're going to play church. And we'd play library. They don't do that nowadays. We'd lift up the piano bench because, you know, it had a lift up lid and that would be the library place. And then they'd get their book because we always had bookshelves with lots of books and you'd get your books and come up. We would made library cards and then we would pretend that we, you know, we would play library and then leave with them. And then the other person would come and bring them back and the library would have to put them back on the shelf. Kids don't play like that anymore. Where am I? Talking about singing and getting caught, my granddaughter. I asked her the other day, do you still have that recording? Because I was going to make a short out of it because it's so funny, my singing ability. But she said, I don't think I have it anymore. She probably got a different phone or I don't know, something. But anyway, she doesn't have it. Darn, I could relive it, but it wouldn't be the same. So, um, it's the singing. The, oh, the grand, the old kids, the grown kids do not want to hear you sing to them anymore. <laughs> and I always try to sing in the car and they is like, oh, grandma. Of course, now I really play it up because I get attention. We all want attention, don't we? But it's fun to play with the, and here's another thing that the teenagers hate. I did it to my kids all the time. When you drop them off at school and everybody's getting dropped off and they're walking in, when they just about get to the door, honk, and they look, and of course everybody looks, and you wave, your teenager hates that. I used to do stuff like that all the time. When they walk in front of the car, you honk, and it scares them. And some of my boys, I'll just drop me off at the corner, I'll get off here, because they didn't trust me when I would drop them off. They turned out good now, so it must have helped them. They like attention. All kids do like attention. And all of my grandkids that are grown have these memories of the tea party. And they still, oh, I remember this little cup. I love drinking out of it. I buy Otter Pops. Let them have as many as they want. They're going getting this much juice and they're cheap. The only rule, you got to put your wrappers in the garbage. If I find them around, I won't buy them anymore. And so they're trained. I never follow through on that because anyway, they, and then they always grab a handful to take home. And if the cost is minimal, it's their memories I'm going for. And then when I make cookies and they take a cookie, I always say take two, but I don't make them too much anymore. It's cheaper to buy them. Those chocolate chips, if you make homemade cookies those cookies are gold they cost a lot to make nowadays so you go to the dollar tree and just buy those cheap crap cookies and then you're not tempted to eat them but i always say when they're little and they take a cookie oh no take two you need one for each hand that's the memories they love you then feed them are you hungry do you want more to eat and then of course the parents can worry about the nutrition i don't worry about the nutrition I have never spanked a grandchild. I don't believe that's not my place. We had some thumbsucker grandchildren. And I think it's cute. But my husband, oh, they're too old to suck their thumb. You need to, you know, stop sucking your thumb and getting after them and stuff. I said, Jamie, it's not your place. Just let it. It's their parents' place. And they're only just going to hate you if you're at them all the time to do that. And I said, this too shall pass. Okay, here's a confession. Trevor, he had a bottle till he was four. Sorry. But here's the problem I had. When Trevor was there, Trevor and Tyson, my two youngest boys, are 18 months apart. So when, and I breastfed uh, Trevor only like nine months, and then I breastfed, or five months, it wasn't very long. Cause, and then I had Tyson, and 
he breastfed for a long time, but he was born hungry. So he would take a bottle, breast, he didn't care. Any, any food he would eat. But the problem was then as I tried to wean him and I'd give him a bottle, Trevor would steal it from him because he wasn't weaned yet. You know, 18 months and he had a bottle till he was two or whatever. So then I was like, I couldn't take the bottle from him until Tyson was done with it because Trevor would steal it from him. And he loved his bottle. And that was at the time we divorced and he missed his dad so much. And I thought that is his comfort. He needs his bottle. So I didn't push it and I just let him, he only had it, you know, like at bedtime and stuff. And so he remembers finally at four when he had to get rid of the bottle and how I did it was I, every time he would have a bot, want a bottle at nap time or bed, I would say, you're too big for a bottle during the day. And he, I know I'm too big for a bottle. He talked really good. I'm too big for a bottle. I can't have one anymore. I said, I know you can't, but then come bedtime, I want a bottle. So finally the next day when I was ready to do it, make the plunge, cause Tyson was weaned by then. Okay. Uh, we're going to get rid of the bottles. And so I had him help me. He goes, okay, we're going to get rid of them. He agreed. So we got the garbage sack and put all the bottles in the garbage sack. And then we, I had him go to meet the garbage can with me and we put him in the garbage can. And then we heard, you know, and then he went and played. Well, I went and got him out of the garbage can because they were good bottle, glass bottles. I wanted to save them. I know I'm like that. So, um, I had the bottles hidden. But anyway, when the garbage man I came, I said, oh, Trevor, there goes your bottles. Say goodbye, goodbye. So then that night, he couldn't ask for one. Remember, we he did, but we don't have any bottles, remember? Well, he remembers doing that, getting rid of his bottles because it traumatized him so much, but he was four. He couldn't have a bottle anymore. But look at him. You can't tell he had a bottle till he was four. Anyway pacifiers are like that. My kids never had pacifiers though because they breastfed and usually breastfed babies don't like a real nipple, you know. Well, they do like the real nipple. They don't like the plastic one. So, um, all right. I think I covered all of my list. Oh, I was talking about teenagers and I love teenagers. And here's what I found out about teenagers. They love you to interview them and ask questions and pay attention to them and give them attention and they love you. The only problem is Hillary's husband, Levi, they were teenagers when they fell in love. Well, I, when he came over, I wanted to get to know him. He was just such a young buck, you know? So I was asking him questions and questions. And then finally he told me, you ask too many questions. So then I had to lay off of Levi asking the questions. But he's such a nice man now. And he started out with just a, like a teenager, body and everything. But now he goes to the gym and everything. And <laughs> about a year ago, we were at his house. And he came out of the shower. His um, bathroom is not connected to their bedroom because they're in a rental apartment thing. And so anyway, he came out of the bathroom with just a towel around him and Jamie looks at him. He goes, Whoa, you beefed up. You're quite a man now. Cause he goes to the gym and he's really built. Cause you know, we were used to him as a little teenage boy for so long. Anyway, we always have to laugh. Like Jamie fell in love with Levi <laughs> cause he's so built, but he's so nice. And he has all these big old trucks he drives and we were talking about if Jamie dies, Jamie's there, but we're kind of planning the trust and the will. And I like, oh, if he dies, I'm going to be snowed in up here. I'll never get to go anywhere. And I don't, I said, Levi, do you know how to drive the tractor so I can teach me and I can plow? He looks at me because, you know, he has big semis and big dump trucks and big road graders and everything. And he looks at me, Angela, don't worry. I'll take care of you. I will plow you out. Oh, I just wanted to hug him. He's going to take care of me. I might be falling in love with him, too. Anyway, I said, I told Hillary, Hillary, he's such a nice husband. Nice man. 
but Credence, his son, told me, um, my dad, I got grounded. I said, who grounded you? My dad. Because he checked out the same book from the library that at school library that he did the week before. And you're supposed to get a new chapter or something book every time, you know, to improve and take the test. But he got the same book two times in a row. And so that was naughty. And so he got grounded and he couldn't play with anybody for a couple of days. Then I was babysitting them and, and Credus goes, I'm grounded. I can't go to Brinley's and play my other granddaughter. And I said, well, I'm babysitting you and you have to go because you're with me. No, my dad, he said, I'm grounded. I can't play for a few days. Anyway, he went with me, but I said, are you scared of your dad? Yes. I'm like, good. Children need a little fear. My boys were, they were not scared of me one bit. And then I would ground them and I forgot I grounded them and they knew I would forget. And then they, so then Tyson got his girlfriend pregnant. I know if he had a dad, he would have been scared to sneak out of the house and go to her house and get her, he got her pregnant. That was sad because he's only 15. So I just think they could love you, but they still need to, like I was so fearful of my mother. I don't know what she would do if I disobeyed, but I wasn't going to cross her because I was kind of scared of her, loved her to death. And she was affectionate with me and everything, but. I had a fear. I don't want to disappoint my mother. I don't want to scare my mother because I don't know what she'll do. I wasn't scared of her beating me or anything. It was, you know, but taking away things from you. You can't drive. That's what you do with teenagers. In fact, I know some of them give them a phone on purpose. So then I can use it as leverage. When they're bad, I get their phone. Or when the car, they don't get to drive. My one... That's what I used, driving. If they didn't run my errands for me, because I'm, it's my car and I let them drive. If they say no, then I don't want to go do that. Okay, then you don't get to drive to school tomorrow. But now they use the phone as leverage. You gotta have, you have to know what you can use with the child as leverage. Like if your child loves to go in their room, you can't say, go to your room. If they said that to me, Yay, I get to go spend my time in my room. Then some children, like my sister, that was the worst punishment in the world to go to a room and have to be alone. So you got to find out what works for the kids. Hillary, it was shopping when she was little. She loved to go to the store shopping with me. So this one time she did something naughty. I don't remember what it was. And I said, okay, next time I go to the store, you don't get to go with me. Oh, and so then I wanted her to remember. So I that lot, later that day, I pretended I'm going to the store right then because I wanted her to remember that she's in trouble and she didn't get to go. So I didn't want it too many days to go by. So then I, you know, made it up with the brothers were teenagers and they babysit and stuff. So I said, okay, I'm going to the store. And Hillary grabs her shoes. I'm ready. Oh no, remember you were naughty. So you don't get to go with me. I, I'm sorry. I want to go. I'm so oh, that was the worst punishment ever. So I left just for a little bit and came back, you know. But then she learned so that the next time I could remember last time, you didn't get to go with me because you were naughty. So you better be good or you're not going to get to go shopping with me. You find out what their leverage is. You don't have to beat them. I don't approve of them. I had this one person I knew. Step son they would make the kids sta sit on the stairs was their punishment for five minutes whatever five minutes or something because the child kept climbing the stairs a little baby year i don't know year old 18 months anyway they were scared so they go no you're in trouble now you have to sit on the stairs for five minutes is your punishment oh my gosh the little kid they're fighting them the whole time sit there i told you to sit there and the kid's trying to get up the kid's trying to get up when they're that age, if you just have to give them a little pop on the butt, some kids anyway, and get it over with, their punishment over with, and then say, don't do it again, or you're going to get it, you know, a pop again. Their little hands, you could slap their hand, don't touch that. And of course, some Hillary, that didn't work because she was stubborn. And she would, some kids will fight it out with you. So you have to learn the kid what works with them. And... 
with Hillary, it was, you don't get to go shopping. That was her big thing. Now, Emily was so sensitive. Have you had a child like this? You are naughty. And they just break up crying. You just have to scold them and they're crushed. So I've had children like that. Those kids are easy because, you know, you just have to use your look or scold them and they'll be good. Every kid's different and how you raise each one is a little different. If your kid doesn't go anywhere and you go, you're grounded, what's that? That doesn't mean a darn thing to them because they never went anywhere anyway. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I don't have to raise kids anymore. Okay, especially nowadays. Oh my gosh, the phone and, you know, if they send a naked shot to their friend, you know, they could go to jail. Oh, all this stuff I hear. <sighs> I'm glad I'm not raising kids anymore. All right, I talked for 45 minutes and you're probably sick of me, so I'm going to quit. And this, remember when I started, was how to make kids love you. And the main thing is, like my mother, if she loved certain people because they loved her back. And the more you love, the more you love each other. So just, you know, nowadays more than any time ever is the children need to know we love them and that we can, they can depend on us. So that is my message today. And I'm not going to edit this or do anything to it. I'm just going to publish this right now.